Warning, 30 Screams or Less may contain spoilers about movies that have recently been released. If you haven't seen the movie, go watch it, come back, and enjoy the show. Or, if you don't want to waste your time watching the movie and rather have two random horror dudes watch it for you, we got you covered as well. Welcome everyone to 30 Screams or Less, a horror movie podcast where we review horror movies in 30 minutes or less. Today's movie we're going to be reviewing is called Sick. It's a Peacock original. It's directed by John Hyams, written by Kevin Williamson and Caitlin Crabb. It's starring Gideon Alden as Parker, Bethlehem Million as Mary, Dylan Sprayberry as DJ, and Jane Adams as Pamela. Plot is, due to the pandemic, COVID... Parker and her best friend decide to quarantine at the family lake house alone, or so they think. 30 Screams or Less starts now. Corey, what did you think of Sick? Dude, I love slasher movies. We both know this. We both love Mm -hmm. slasher movies. And I was excited to watch this when you suggested it because I actually didn't watch a trailer. I just sort of read what it was. And I'm not going to lie. The subject was corny as fuck. Okay, yeah. It doesn't mean I hated the movie by any means. In fact, I loved it. I just thought that it was based on COVID. Like people were pissed about COVID. And I think maybe too, it was a little PTSD because the movie opens up with this <laughs> kid going to a grocery store looking for toilet paper or paper towels or whatever. Dude, just watching it. You're like, Ugh. yeah. And he's basically fucking getting mugged by people and he's only allowed to buy one. So the man can wipe his ass like, dude, we live that. Yeah, that shit was fucking real. It was crazy. Maybe that's why I was a little salty about it, because we lived it. Yeah, it does give a little PTSD feel, because when you're watching it, you're like, oh, I was here. I don't like this. I'm not a fan. That type deal. So I I was a little... The attention to details, though, in the grocery store, because obviously everyone's wearing masks. They even had the arrows on the floor, like what direction you're supposed to go in the aisles. Oh, yeah, which I think should always be a thing anyways. I'm a big fucking stickler on stay in your lane. Just fucking run people over with your carriage, dude. Probably better off. I sometimes think that, like, you know, there should be lines in the middle of the fucking lanes, and that way people stay to the left or right, and if they need to cut over, they need a fucking blinker on those things. Dude, this is the highway. You can't. That's not a thing. Also, people listening to this will have no fucking clue what a blinker is. What's it actually called? I know that's what we call it in New Hampshire. Oh, I thought it was always called blinker. Is it a directional, I guess? Directional? <laughs> yeah. I could be either. Yeah. The left light. I don't know. It's a blinker to us New Englanders. And even though are I you, moved. Are you saying that because people don't use them? Yeah, people barely use them. Like, okay. In New England or even Florida, barely use them. Yeah, yeah. absolutely I've, correct. I've noticed that. And I'm stuck in the mindset. Have you ever seen the movie Shoot 'em Up? Was that Clive Owen in that one? Yes. Okay. Okay. So there's a scene where he's driving with that girl and he's pissed off at this guy that's driving in front of him because he's not doing the directional at all. And he's like, this is fucking stupid. A directional is a flick of a finger. And you see him just flicking his finger up or down to switch lanes and stuff. And the girl's like, you have some real anger management issues, don't you? And I think he actually ends up hitting the car just because the guy wouldn't fucking do his directional at all. I haven't watched that movie in a while. It's a fucking banger of a movie. Yeah, that one was great. Was that also the one where he got mad at somebody for like flicking cigarette butts out the window and he pulls him over and he fucking jams a carrot in his eye? <laughs> He's just eating carrots the whole time and watching a baby. It's so over the top. Actually. Yeah, I know this is a horror movie podcast, but any chance I get to talk about fucking shoot him up, I will. I oh. love that movie. I love those over the top movies like that. Crank. Crank 2 is pure genius there was a fucking fight scene of chet chelios and godzilla or something in it it's absurd the movie's nuts it's so yeah. ridiculous movie i love now, it yeah and now jason statham is off fighting sharks yeah exactly with meg too he's fucking doing his like kicks and shit to the fucking giant ass shark so back to this thing did you get yes. like massive scream vibes like right after the grocery store scene when he started getting texts 
Dude, I got real massive scream vibes with this movie. And actually, later on in the film, I was like, oh, this is definitely scream vibes because of the killer. But we'll go into that. But yes, right away, scream vibes, just because of like the stalker aspect. You know, with Ghostface, he's very stealthy, very stalker-like. He's not just like charging at you unless you're legitimately in pursuit of him. He will try to fucking take you out if he can quietly. That's what he does. But yeah, the fucking guy is no Jason. He's no Michael Myers. Nothing like that. I definitely got scream vibes from it. So I did. I like enjoyed that. it for that reason. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that the whole maybe like first 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, it was a tribute to Scream. I mean, you've got the kid in the store getting random text messages. Mm-hmm. He's getting the text messages when he's walking out to his car. And yeah, then eventually he gets his neck cut. Yeah, because think about it. It's very similar to the first scream with Drew Barrymore getting killed. Yeah. So you have your killer that's contacting by phone. Obviously, scream is an actual phone call. This one is a text message. So you get that communication from the killer to the victim right away. And now you have that stalker aspect where keeps calling, keeps texting. And then eventually she starts to think she's not safe in the house because this person keeps calling and knows like some fine details. And same with this one. The door's open and he's fucking just gets home from the supermarket. And obviously now he's like, okay, who the fuck's in my house? That type deal. And then he sees the shadow of that killer in the TV, which I thought was awesome. Little subtleties like that. I love that. Yeah, definitely a lot of callbacks to Scream. Very beginning. Yeah, which I'm fine with. Basically, you can almost think of it as Scream, but COVID. It has a lot of similarities, but there's a lot I did like about this movie. And then some that I thought was okay. Like the lead girl in the movie couldn't stand her. I thought she was entitled. And I think this is the character she's just playing. She thinks she doesn't need to wear masks or anything like that. She's going to have fuck COVID parties, make out with random boys and not even worry about it. But, you know, in those times we were worried about it. We were fucking careful. You didn't know we were having these massive numbers of people that were dying from fucking COVID. And... People were taking it seriously. It's so funny you say that you didn't like Parker because in my final score, I have the complete opposite opinion. Really? You loved her because she's obnoxious, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> we'll you get fucker. there. We will get there. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm not surprised the slightest bit. I just thought she was fucking obnoxious. She just didn't give a shit. She only cared about having fun and fucking her social media life and fucking whoever she needs over to whatever. She just didn't fucking give a shit. And that's okay. that's why I didn't like her. But you probably like her for that sole reason. And I bet you like her because and I'm dropping wrestling references here because, hey, we're part of the Shining Wizards Network. She's basically a heel. Or she's like that pseudo heel, you know, it's like that toes the line between the two, but is more on the heel side. Like Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins toes the heel side, but I think he's a face now. She's the MJF of sick. (laughs) Okay. Like what he's doing right now with Adam Cole. I haven't watched it. I heard amazing things, though. Dude, it's like my favorite thing in wrestling right now, especially what they did last night in Boston. Oh, my goodness. You need to watch it. Oh, Blood and Guts. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that was a horror show in itself because some people were getting body slammed on bed of nails. I saw yeah, that. There, there was a legit back bump on a bed of nails, oh. and they were real nails. Oh yeah, they weren't fucking gimmicked. Oh no, the glass was definitely gimmicked. Um, oh, the, sure. the bed of nails was not, and the thumbtacks were not. I that was reading, sense. dude. Kota Ibushi, I guess after the camera stopped airing, Kota Ibushi just randomly decided to throw his body on a bed of thumbtacks and he posed for a photo. His, his back just looks like a pin cushion. What the fuck? Okay, good for him. Yeah, just because he could. <laughs> Kota Ibushi back in yeah. the U.S. fucking taking thumbtack bumps. Yeah, they come back and you know, well, we're back from break and Kota Ibushi's covered in tax. We don't know why, but he just is. Yep. They wouldn't be able to explain it. Well, what are they going to say? Oh, yeah, he fell in a bunch of tax and now he's up. He did it for the lulls. He did it for the Instagrams. Literally, the match was over. Oh, that's right. You don't have to come back from commercial when the match is over and everything's done for. So that's just your end of the night thing where all the wrestlers are like, drive safe, blah, 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 all that. I'll just send you a picture. Oh, I got to see that photo. Text it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Fuck, look at that. That's a cool photo. Because fuck it. He's like, I already got paid. So I do want to say this. I loved how this movie kicked off because there was no fucking long drawn on shit. Like the movie we watched last week, which is We Might Hurt Each Other, right? That took 40 or 50 minutes to kick in. This kicked in in less than 15 minutes, if that. Oh, yeah. The kid went grocery shopping to get shit paper and uh, 
Yeah, it was right off from then. Yep. As soon as he got home, he's in a fight, gets his throat cut, movie starts. This brings me to my next bullet here. So Tyler gets killed, and we see the credits of the movie. Yep. The, the intro. And then we meet Parker and Miri for the first time, and they are sitting down watching news reporters and stuff, and they're watching an interview with Fauci, who was like, what, the lead scientist or doctor or whatever when COVID yeah. was a thing. Yeah. They created a Fauci drinking game. Why did we How not do, do this? Yeah, Any- why didn't we fucking think of this? So when COVID was a thing to our listeners, like all of our friends, there were like 15 of us. Pretty much every Friday night, we would get together on Zoom Fun and we'd pick, a, we'd pick a wrestling show to watch. And we'd all watch it at the same time. We'd literally pick this timestamp and everything. We had a Royal Rumble drinking game. That was fun. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah. That's classic. Doing the Royal Rumble drinking game is awesome. Love. Yeah. That. So that was what we did to like stay in touch with our friends during COVID. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they just drank together. Every time Fauci's name was said, they would do a shot for Dude, us. Every time a dead wrestler entered the ring or someone goes over the second rope, something like that, you would do a shot. Yeah, it was a shot or like it was a certain amount of alcohol, too. So was it just a shot for a dead wrestler or was it like rest in peace, one bear for a wrestler, like a dead wrestler? There were definitely some in-depth rules. I think Casares came up with it. Yeah, I think he has like a real detailed list of rules for yep. the Royal Rumble drinking game. But a COVID drinking game, I am surprised that we didn't fucking even think of that. That's a no-brainer. Yeah, this, we that been, would, we that would have been, been perfect. obliterated. Yeah, that would have been perfect for... I mean, I get we, were, we already had our drinking game, but this would have been a different one that we could have done. Yeah, but either way, do enjoy myself some drinking games. But. So then, like, could they finally get to the lake house? And I thought of you, like, almost instantly while I'm watching this movie because I saw something going on in the background, and I was like, Steve literally just had to change his pants. Yeah, I basically came all over the place. Yeah, you filled the yeah. cup because yeah. there was something going on in the background. Yeah, I had to change my underwear a few times. And we find out that it's just this bozo DJ who is in love with Parker, who followed her to this camp just yep. to try and beg for her heart back, basically. Yeah, he's trying. A for effort. But bro, you fucking should have shot higher because yep. he ends up fucking dying for this girl who doesn't even give a shit about him. Yeah, but he stuck around for a while. But I tell you, man, the second we saw him, I wanted him to die so bad. He was so annoying. Yeah, he looked like one of those fucking guys who just, I I don't know, holds you weird from behind and says, thank you for buying me dinner, baby, at McDonald's. That kind of deal. He looked like one of those guys. Yeah. But I do feel bad for him because, yes, he tried, but wasn't the best character. He tried like hell for this girl he ends up dying in elaborate fashion yeah he got it real bad oh it was so cool because you would think okay yeah he gets stabbed a whole bunch of times so he's now got a fucking bunch of knife wounds in him and he's leaving the house and he's kind of just staggering there but what you see is you see his legs or his feet kind of walking almost like uh, like he's floating almost yeah or like a puppeteer or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So he's walking almost like a puppeteer as Parker is watching on. And this dude's got a stake in his back. So the killer is walking him with this stake in the back. And Parker doesn't see it right away because she thinks that DJ's just coming out of the house to try to get away from that fucking shit. But then the killer just fucking rails the spike right through DJ. And that's all he wrote. Yep. Was Maddie in the truck? She hadn't fallen out of the house yet, right? No, it took the massive back bump. Jesus. Oh, right. Okay. So then what happens is, is they get in the truck and they start driving away. And I'm surprised they got as far as they did. I mean, the killer had slashed the tires in the truck. So they were driving on their rims. That's not good for the car, man. No, not that's at all. Why I'm pretty sure that's why they stopped and had to go back to the house because they didn't get very far. Yeah, and they're trying to fucking still drive with the thing. They're stuck on the grass. Of course, it's just going to fucking spin and spin and cut the grass up. And then uh, this part I loved because this killer is clearly fucking very menacing. Very, I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to kill you. That type deal. Because he literally picks up a rock and just hucks it through the window. And this guy clearly is just fucking, I don't give a shit. I'm here to kill and that's it. But so the girls start running, Parker and Mary, they're starting to run through the house and you see the killer just fucking 
bolting it with them, like behind them. That's what I loved about this killer. Is like there wasn't too much stalking, nothing like that. It was just full blown chaos. So that was one of my favorite things about this movie. There were a lot of chase scenes. That's not really a thing in today's horror films, like good chase scenes. And there were a ton of them in this movie. Yes. Yeah, that's what I think actually keeps up tension and just builds and builds and builds tension when you're just constantly in this chase and they're being pursued, but it's not a comical amount of space in between the killer and the victim, if you will. So they're both clearly bolting it. And there's this one scene where Parker manages to get, oh, you know what? We need to go back first because I don't want to talk about the raft thing without talking about this ginormous back bump that Mary took. And all she got was a broken leg out of it. Dude, dude. she, dude, she must have fell like two and a half, three stories from this fucking house, then just I, landed straight on her back and like, ow, my legs broke. That's what like my note says is like Mary survived falling from the sky. It was a absurd height that she fell from and just broke a leg. Yeah, she should be in CZW. Uh, only Nick Gage dies in the ring. Yeah, exactly. Nick Gage dies, but she lives. I bet she'd be perfectly fine in that wrestling company. So side note here, there's a rumor that June Kasai is going to come to the U.S. in August for the GCW Homecoming event this year. Oh, no shit. Okay. Against against Nick Gage. Oh. And there's a rumor that Mox might be in the match, too. Oh, that would be ridiculous. So are you coming to do that trip again? Oh, I might. In August, you said? I think it's August. Yeah, it's like usually the beginning of August, maybe. Beginning of August. I almost put a kibosh on that time frame of coming up because we ended up canceling the show. Apparently, our drummer wasn't ready to do it. He didn't feel like he was comfortable enough to hop back into a set. And I'm just like, all right, well, I guess I'm not flying up. But yeah, if I have... Weren't yeah, on there. I, say again? I saw the poster for that and you guys weren't on there. So I figured something happened. Yeah, that's basically what happened. And I feel bad I didn't contact the promoter, let them know we're not playing. We basically let it lapse when probably should have been more communicative. That's my bad. I might hit up Richie anyways and be like, hey, dude, I'm sorry none of us got back to you. He did say that there's room for one more band. Yeah. We hop on again. What the fuck? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, It's August 19th, by the way. I just. Oh, is it a few days after my birthday? Yeah. Oh, that would have been perfect. We'll go see some death matches. Oh, so the death matches is August 19th. Yeah, probably. Maybe. Might make for a fun weekend. I'll yeah. Look into it. I'll look into flights. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Let's get back into it. Takes this ginormous back bump. I think she's dead because anyone that falls from that height, probably a good bet they are dead unless it's like some sort of miracle that they just managed to just survive it. It happens. It does happen. People have fallen out of planes and survived somehow. So, I so, could only imagine. Yeah. And then like she realizes that her leg's broken and goes in the house and fucking would she grab a chair from the kitchen table and a bread knife? Yeah. And she uses the bread knife to cut the chair off the leg off the <laughs> or the leg off the chair. I was like, there is no fucking way. That is not possible. Yeah, there were a few things in this where it's like, how does that make sense? Mm-hmm. There's no way. Like the whole carving knife thing, the electric one. Like maybe, maybe like if it's some cheap ass furniture you get from Ikea, perhaps, but dude, no. highly unlike, no, no, it's a bread it, knife. Yeah. A bread, but you can barely cut through bread. It's just for spreading. It's just meant <laughs> for spreading. That's all. Yeah. And not to mention a place like that. It's not going to have anything from fucking Ikea. It's too nice. Yeah. It was a nice mansion that her family had in the woods there. I know. Oh, which I got this little, you know, little uh, cabin in the woods deal. And it's like a fucking mansion. It's something you would pay three grand a night for on Airbnb. Fucking crazy, but gorgeous looking place. Yeah. She does the whole bread knife thing. And she does, I think at that point, see that. And you know what? Spoiler alert. There's two killers in this. So when she's in the house and she's actually doing the whole bread knife thing to the chair, whatever there's one of the killers is down and fucking dead or so we think but basically what happened to him is parker beat the shit out of him with the end of a juicer smashing his face in, and you think okay he's dead brain damaged all day that's it so yeah. just super brain damaged so miri's in the house she's trying to make a makeshift splint right and this fucking guy somehow rises up perfectly fine okay not perfectly fine he's clearly fucked up but he's trying to attack her and she ends up stabbing the guy in the throat now he's finally dead so there's that one killer the other killer is still in pursuit of parker and this is probably the most ridiculous pursuit i've ever seen in a movie in my entire life and i think you know which one i'm talking about it's the fucking raft on the middle of the lake 
was so confused. I saw her get on that thing and start paddling it. I was like, did this bitch just fucking paddle herself away on a dock? Yeah. Just a whole ass piece of the dock she starts paddling away on. And then typical like slasher throwbacks here. The killer, apparently he's a scuba diver or something, can hold his breath for an infinite amount of time because he starts (laughs) stabbing like upwards in the bottom of this raft to get Parker and eventually ends up stabbing her in the hand. Oh, but not to fact, mention an the, Olympic swimmer to swim yeah. after her that fast. Swim after her. She's in the middle of a fucking lake. This guy's under the raft, under it, just holding his breath and stabbing upwards through yeah. through wood, through wood. Wearing boots, mind you. Wearing boots. Yep. Swimming, wearing boots, swimming that fast in the dark with full hoodie, mask on, everything somehow is going blazing fast in the water, chasing after this girl. So, yeah, she starts stabbing up. She gets stabbed, like you said, and she ends up jumping off the raft, I guess she was on. Now, my question is, if she jumped off the raft and he's still in the water, wouldn't she be dead in five seconds if this dude was that much of an Olympic swimmer? Nah, man, she swam faster than him. I guess so, because earlier in the movie, like these people must have been so unbelievably fast at everything they do, because she said earlier in the movie that her closest neighbor is like two and a half miles away. So... How the hell did this girl either run or swim two and a half miles or like get on this freaking raft and raft two and a half miles to this neighbor's house only for the neighbor to fucking die because the killer slit the neighbor's throat? And that's Parker for you. Parker's being a douche, getting people killed. Listen, stop bashing Parker. She sucks. Uh, Whatever. (laughs) You love Parker. You love her because she's like the MJF of fucking horror movies. She's the heel you love to... Love to love. Yeah, yeah. So like, like the Iron Sheik. Yeah, exactly. Iron Sheik, he's fucking great. The shit that he was saying when he was alive, rest in peace, Iron Sheik, was always great to see on Twitter. Dude, speaking of wrestlers, tonight I watched the Dark Side of the Ring episode that aired last night about Abdul the Butcher. Oh, God. Oh, my God. People were scared of him. Like, well, literally, no shit. Of, he walks of, to the ring with a fucking fork. No, like he would jump out of the ring and the fans would run. I would. But that reminds me like the Iron Sheik because people used to try and literally kill him. Like he would get death because he was a Iranian, very anti-American. Yep. Um, and, th- and those were the times back then. They had the war and it was like the war in Iran. And you had Sergeant Slaughter who was switching sides from America to side with Iran and all this stuff. And it was fucking ridiculous. Yeah. So it's basically, funny. well, Jay Parker is the Iron Sheik of sick. OK. All right. Who always wants to fight Hulk Hogan. Got it. Yeah. Parker always wanting to fight Hogan. Yeah. So Parker, a.k.a. Iron Sheik, is getting her neighbors killed now because she's like, I just need to use the phone. And naturally, he dead, dead. Fucking throw cut, all this stuff. Parker books it. Not to mention that this neighbor pulled a gun on Parker. Rightfully so. Parker broke into the house like the punk that she is. And the neighbor's like, who the fuck are you? Get out of the house. You have five seconds to get out of this house. He's holding this two-barrel shotgun. He gets killed. Killer grabs the shotgun. Now the killer's got a fucking gun and a knife going after Parker. And somehow Parker still made it. But this is my favorite part. My favorite part is when she makes it out to the road and the killer tackles her. You remember this part, right? Absolutely. Yep. Great part. This is probably one of my favorite parts of the whole movie. Other than the fact that earlier in the movie, when DJ showed up to the house and there was a knock at the door, Miri put on the mask. Rather than worrying about who the fuck's coming to this secluded house at this time of night, she's worried about putting a mask on, not getting COVID, over getting killed. Hated that. Again, it's probably because we lived it, but still. Yeah, it was cringy, but yeah, we lived it. It was fucking ridiculous. So now we're at that part where she's actually in the middle of the road and she's fighting this killer and she managed to fend him off. I think she hit him with something and knocked the killer down. And then there's this car coming. And so obviously flags it down like I would probably ready to get her killed as well. But this lady stops and she's like, oh, my God, are you OK? Parker's trying to get in the car and the lady's like, where's your mask? And this is what COVID was like. Everyone was like, where's your mask? You're not wearing your mask. That type deal. But you and I, luckily, we had some pretty sweet masks during COVID. The COVID era. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely did. Yeah, we had some custom Jason masks made by Jason Baker and Tom Savini. Very cool. I thought it was awesome. But it's actually displayed in my living room now. So I put it up today. 
Mine's right next to me on nice. my shelf. Yours is different. Yours is actually signed. I was physically wearing mine, and people were raving about it. Yeah, I wore mine once, and because it was signed, I was like, I shouldn't do this. Yeah, understandable. I wouldn't have worn it either if it was signed by Tom Savini. Yep. But if I do bump into Tom Savini, you know, just like, oh, hey, how's it going? Maybe I'll get it signed. Or maybe I'll be like in Step Brothers, you know, I'll be walking around with a katana, and then I see him, and I'd be like, I need you to sign this. But this is my favorite part. So the lady's like, where's your mask? And she's like, I think I have an extra one. And Parker finally gets in the car and the lady hands her the mask. Now, Parker's wearing it and she's like, this smells a little funny. And the lady that said it smells like chloroform. Yeah. So the lady had this mask that was covered in chloroform. And he was basically the ringleader of this whole thing. So there was two killers involved and she was the one that kind of perpetrated the whole thing and the reason why all this happened and like that's what i loved the whole it was a twist right it was the, the, the twist unveiling. was cool but it, yeah the unveiling was cool but i definitely was like oh god gross so when they revealed why they were doing what they were doing yeah well and that's the whole idea of the movie is sick it's that it had to do with covid so mm-hmm. this person obviously like the whole family lost their mind basically what happened was parker was making out with this kid benji at one of those fuck covid parties and the people that were the murderers they were a family it was the father the mother and the son the reason why they were doing all this shit is because parker kissed their family member benji was actually part of their family and he died from covid because he contracted it from her and she was asymptomatic So she didn't know she had it and she was giving out COVID to people and just fucking living her best life, you know, not giving a shit, just being pure Parker, just being the fucking heel that you love, apparently. Benji's sick, Benji died, and now this family wants revenge. They want blood, obviously. So this whole thing was about revenge because she pulled that shit. So what I'm getting at is the whole twist is about Benji dying because of Parker's recklessness. Yeah. And like once they finally capture Parker and she wakes up from her chloroform nap, they make her do a COVID test. That's fucking so absurd. They make her do a bloody (laughs) nose COVID test. They jam the Q-tip into her brain like we've done many times and they find out she's she's positive. Yeah. Fucking tickle in the back of my throat. I hated it. Yep. Yeah. You know, they would jam that fucking thing like basically to my brain. Okay. Not to my brain, but really back there in my sinuses. And for hours later, I was not itching my nose. I just felt something in my fucking nose for the rest of the night. I mean, they went, they went back so fucking far. Yeah. They were just like, oh, I'm just going to scrape the side of your eyeball while I'm in there. (laughs) From your nose. Yep. All connected, all the sinuses and everything. It's all there. But they're just like, yeah, well, we're just going to swing it in there at an angle. We just want to make sure we get everything. Yeah, I've had that a few times. Yeah, I did do it a couple times because it was going around in my office. Yeah, I think I did it probably three times. Like one of the times, rightfully so. Like second time, probably a good idea. Third time, I think it was more of a preventative. But that sucked. I remember those times of fucking having those things jammed up our nose, being awful. I was a pain in my ass or my face, whatever you want to phrase it. (laughs) Well, it didn't go up your ass. It didn't go up my ass. That would (laughs) literally be the worst COVID test ever. Like, so the only way we have to test is we got to put this Q-tip up your ass. Okay. I've been like, fuck it. Just take me. Let it yeah. kill me. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'm done. I'm not fucking having one of those things break off in my ass. <laughs> oh, the- shit. We went too far. It's now broken. <laughs> well, now we have to go in. And, whoa. Like if we got to go in there with some long pliers now, pull it out of your ass. Oh, God. So I'm glad that wasn't a thing. All right. COVID test happens. All that shit. Finds out she's positive. The father of... The two sons now dead at this point. The father, he steps away because he finds out that Mary's actually using the internet to call for her help. So he's looking all around the house for her, all this. So now it's just Parker and Pamela at this point. Pamela's the mother. So Parker and Pamela are talking. Mary comes up from behind, hits Pamela with a freaking champagne bottle or whatever it was. It was a bottle regardless. And they throw her through a glass door. So you think, okay, that's it. She's done for. But you and I both know someone just going through a fucking glass door, glass window, whatever, isn't the end. That's just like, oh, fuck, I get messed up. Yeah, she just took a nap for a few minutes. Yeah, we've seen plenty of wrestlers go through glass plates and they just they get up and they're like, got to sell some merch now. Yeah. Yeah. So she was like knocked out. So they're trying to go through the house. The fucking the father is still in pursuit. They end up knocking him off a balcony. He lands onto antlers, 
which is so violent looking. It was, it, I, it was very brutal. It looked good. It looked very good, I thought. Because you just saw the landing and then just the fucking horns and everything coming out through him. And obviously, he dead. He dead dead. As opposed he, to Pamela, we're not sure. Yeah, Pamela just took a nap. He was dead dead. Yeah, he was very dead dead. So the girls think they're fine at this point. They're like, we got to get out of here. There's a barn. I think there's a four-wheeler or something there. So they go there. They're trying to start the four-wheeler. It can't start. Pamela comes back. She's like all bloodied. Her and Parker are getting in this like whole big fight. And there's one thing in there that had me fucking dying laughing. Parker's like, I said I'm sorry. And she fucking hits Pamela. And Pamela goes down. From there, she gets covered in gasoline, lit on fire, and Pamela's just running around like the girl from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, just being like, ah, fucking screaming all weird. Yeah, and running up the street while she's on fire. Yeah, and I'm just like, lady, stop, drop, and fucking roll, will you? I learned that shit in kindergarten. She was covered in gasoline. I don't know if that was going to happen. Like, yeah, I, okay. Like, I yeah, I, I, you know, you might be right. If you're covered in gasoline, I think the whole idea of stop, drop, and roll is moot at that point. Because you're soaked in gasoline. It's not going to fucking stop. I probably would have just started taking off clothes and then now I come back as the killer, butt ass naked. Be like, you fucking bitch. I paid $50 for that at Target. At Target. Yeah. Fall places, Target. Not like H&M, nothing like that. Target. Target, very Target's got some nice clothes. It does have some decent clothes. I've been known to buy shit there. They usually have a lot of good graphic tees. Yeah, I know. You go up to someone wearing one of their band tees and like name one song from that band. You ever do that? I have never done that to someone. Just been like, you don't like that band. Tell me their whole discography. Honestly, I haven't either. I'm not a dick like that, but I've seen people do it. Because I, people just buy those graphic tees from Target. Yep. I actually recently went to, it was a bunch of local vendors or something like that. I was thinking it was going to be some sort of farmer's market type deal, whatever. It was nothing but vendors selling vintage clothing, vintage t-shirts and shit. I was like, oh, wow. I saw some girl walking around in a fucking behemoth t-shirt and I'm like, tell me every fucking song that you know. No, I didn't say that, but because just because I'm like... This girl looks like she's fucking 13. If she knows Behemoth, good for her. But if she's just wearing that because it's a cool shirt, then I guess it's still promotion for them, right? Sure, what her favorite album is. And if she doesn't yeah. say Demigod, you should have just like called the cops. Yeah, exactly. So I shouldn't be like, you know what? Nope. Give me the shirt. But it was cool because I did find a lot of cool shirts there. Some of them were quite expensive. I found a Dream Theater shirt for Bry and sent that up to him. I showed it to him and he's like, how much is it? I want it now. I'll Venmo you right away. I'm like, okay. Venmo me seconds later. I'm like, well, I'm buying this then. Dude, you know, yeah. Brian's a dream theater nuts. Dude, it was a dream theater tour shirt from like the early 90s. I was like, how is this still in this condition? It was like 50 bucks. That's not bad. No, because that's what you pay now for a new tour shirt. Every fucking concert I go to, shirts are $40, $50. So I didn't think it was that bad. Especially, hey, if that made him happy, that's fine with me. Cool. Yeah. So she dies, doesn't stop, drop, and roll. Cops show up because Miri was able to contact them via, I don't know, instant messenger or fucking AOL AIM or ICQ or whatever. And <laughs> Oh, my it. God. Taking me back. Yep. The palace chat. She just hit them up there. Give, and me, your, give me your ICQ 15-digit code so I can send you a message. 109-165-398. <laughs> Perfect. I'm that, downloading I, it right now. That's it. That's my code. For, is it really and, yeah and back then you didn't have screen names nothing like that for icq you had these fucking codes so you had to tell your friends oh my code is this i haven't used icq in 25 years does it still exist yeah oh wow yeah i think it's something different though icq stay connected yeah we're looking i'm looking at it yeah icq stay connected convert audio messages to text use smart replies stay online even with bad internet connection hmm. i think it's the same thing it's just better now yeah Looks like it's better. Video chats and shit like that could be good for us or whatever. Yeah. Excuse me, Mr. Famous Director Man. Go download ICQ so you can be a guest on our podcast. <laughs> You'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I'm not doing this. Goodbye. Yeah. And then then it's like boom, boom. Like fuck. <laughs> Dial to the hang up noise. Yeah. No, that's the connecting noise for modems. Didn't sound anything like it, but I get what you're going for. Corey, what do you give sick? Four out of five. Um... I five, also four to five give it what four to five dead kids. There uh, it really, is. Really cool concept. 
definitely original. I don't think there's another movie that had the plot like this. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, we talked about the chase scenes. I thought the chase scenes were awesome. I don't know if you noticed, but the score was also really cool. And Mary and Parker were somehow very much the only likable characters of this entire film. And it's funny because I was watching this movie and I knew right away that you were going to fucking hate them both. Yeah. And you walked right into it in the beginning talking about how much you hated them. So, yeah. I just, I guess I know you at this point. Yeah, I loved them. You hated them. Yeah, I didn't like them. They sucked. I don't know. I just thought they were absolutely ridiculous. But same deal, four out of five for me. I thought it was actually pretty good. And yeah, I thought it was a very unique story because it's still a taboo thing talking about COVID and reminiscing about it because no one wants to fucking reminisce about that at all. COVID just fucking flat out sucked. It sucked two to three years out of our lives. I remember the first year that COVID kicked in was literally going to be the best summer of my entire life because of the amount of shows that were happening. I was like, I'm going to go broke this fucking summer. And it was going to be amazing. But then everything got pushed back or canceled. And that's when fucking shit... Like, I don't even want to reminisce about it. That's what I'm talking about. So now we're watching a movie that reminds us of that time and how ridiculous things were. Like watching the person cough and everyone turn around like, oh, oh my God, she's sick. When everyone fucking sneezes. It's just a reaction. It happens. So four out of five for me, I thought it was great. Not perfect by any means. There were some faults like the fucking the Olympic swimmer killer, I guess. I didn't understand that. But overall, the killers were very visceral very menacing they just fucking had one objective and did it to the best of their ability and i thought it was great four to five oh man it's to rate the same again yeah i've been getting pretty on par with that i'm waiting for the day where it's like five out of five and you're like i thought it was a one out of five i'm waiting for that argument but we haven't found anything like that yet everything has been pretty much on par it seems for sure for sure for sure. All right, everyone, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Threads now, and YouTube. Leave us a five-star review on all podcast platforms so we can get some more exposure, and be sure to tell your friends. We're also a part of the Shining Wizards Network. Be sure to visit ShiningWizardsNetwork.com. They're an awesome podcast network with shows ranging from wrestling to heavy metal, horror, all that good stuff. So definitely check that out, Shining Wizards Network. Dot com. Visit 30 screams or less.com for all previous episodes and transcripts to go with those episodes. Been putting a little work into that recently, kind of behind a bit, but we'll be caught up soon. If there's anything you want us to review, send us an email to 30 screams or less at gmail.com or hit us up on social media. Use that hashtag 30 screams or less and we'll talk that way. Also, Corey, you and I are very excited about this. I don't know if you all saw it, but we released a design for our upcoming t shirt on Instagram. Twitter, Facebook. If you saw it, we're fucking so pumped to have this thing out. We can't wait to get it released. We're actually going to be implementing a whole merch store. So shirts, fucking coffee mugs, stickers, all sorts of stuff. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Should be up in the next few weeks. Dude, I'm going to need one of those coffee mugs. The beans one. (laughs) The drink beans? Yeah, Yeah, we have a coffee mug coming that says drink beans. I need one of those to have on my desk at work. They're going to be like, what the fuck does that even mean? (laughs) Don't forget to drink your beans. Yep. As I was designing it, I was like sitting next to my girlfriend and I'm asking her opinion. I'm like, what do you think about this? And she's like, the more cartoony, the better. And I'm like, you're absolutely right. That needs to be as absolutely cartoony as possible. And I made it pretty cartoony. Yeah. Everything looks really cool. There's a zip up hoodie too. That's really cool. We should take that zip up hoodie. Maybe uh, we could talk about this later for the future. Sure, sure. Yeah, we'll talk about it. We're going to see if anyone buys this stupid shit first so we can pay for it. Yeah, we got to push it. I got fucking hosting to pay for, damn it. Yeah. Definitely be on the lookout for that. But with that in mind, I'm Steve. And I'm Corey. And thanks for listening to 30 Screams of the Less. And don't forget to drink your beans. Death to Papa Roach, Blink-182, all those fucking pussy sounds like doggy do, wearing baggy pants, spiking up their hair. They're not worth the crust on my underwear. fuck what does that even mean (laughs) people can be like what on earth kind of ending is this seal panther lyrics 
Oh, is that what that is? <laughs> yeah. See, I don't fucking listen to St- Steel Panther. That's why. Death yeah, to Roach Blink One Eighty Two. All those fucking pussies sound like Doggy D. Oh, I, I see the <laughs> I see the rhythm now. <laughs>